No words. Words. What is that? Oh, that's September. Chad, I saw that last night at uh, 1 a.m. It's just a one second clip. It was just a one second clip. And I was like, this resonates with me right now. <laughs> that's all. Sorry, I can't remember where I put things. So you're going to have to give me a second. Okay, I found it. I found it. We're good. All right. Thank you, James, for the gifted sub. <clears throat> Resub myself off of a gifted sub. Okay. Okay. Load game. Should be this one. All right, chat. All right. Okay. So, as you know, we beat the main game. And now we're en route to do the EX content. We're heading to the human village. So let's do it. Allow me to uh, <clears throat> clear my voice. Get a little sippy. And now, let's go to the human village. <clears throat> we arrived at the human village. It's probably where most of Gensokyo's humans reside. Well, with the exception of a few, I think it's where all of Gensokyo's humans reside. But John would know. John's a very smart guy, you know? Oh. John's a very smart guy. He knows a lot about Tuhu. The area and the culture felt like it belonged around the Meiji era. There were Nothing like the conveniences of the present day, but it was still pleasant enough to live in. The atmosphere in the village was especially lively and full of energy. There was a few clear differences from a villager you would find in the outside world. Well, for one, we don't really refer to city goers as villagers. For one, thanks to the Great Barrier, no one could see past the mountains. None of the humans ever seem to care about that, huh? And furthermore, among the among the crowd of bustling humans were many yokai. The village was a place where humans and yokai coexisted. But with Suika at my side for safety, I was content with looking around excitedly like a little kid. Despite never visiting here, I still managed to find several faces I could recognize. Wow! For example, the teacher of the village's elementary school, Kane. Or Aya, who came here to distribute her newspapers. Well, little did he know, Cannon would, uh, adjust this. Of course, there were plenty of yokai I'd never met before, either. Like the one that was standing right in front of me. Oh, yeah, I guess Jason didn't show up in the main story. Need any medicine? Ante brand medicine's the best you can get. Please, have a look. She's in the game, but she wasn't, like, part of the story. Huh. So I guess just get uh, those prominent ears. It was unmistakably Ante's moon rabbit, Grayson. Better know by her full name. You're not gonna, you're gonna give me, John. What's her full name? Do you know her full name, John? She was walking through the area trying her best to sell medicine. She was the only rabbit around, though. I didn't see any scheming brunette rabbits, for example. Don't worry, this game came out before Toho 15, so there's only two ra There's only three rabbits in existence, and one of them will not show up in this game. Hey, and Tay brand medicine, huh? That nutrient medicine that Anning gave me before was really effective. I wouldn't be able to find that kind of medicine even in hospitals. I would love to get my hands on more of that. Is that all you want to get your hands on, John? Because I'm looking at chat. I think they want to get their hands on something else. But I doubt that they take the yen I carry, would they? Hey, how you doing? Oh, it's, it's you. Hi there, business is thriving today. I'm almost sold out. What about you? Are you shopping with your human friend? Unfortunately, I don't have medicine for hangovers from drinking. How? That's fine, I don't get drunk even when I drink sake anyway. It's kind of... Okay, Suika? Maybe you should lay off. It's not doing anything for you anymore. 
I can't even begin to imagine the amount of sake she must drink. Hmm? I'm hearing some commotion over there. Is it just me? It looks like oh, it looks like it's coming from the plaza. Shall we take a look? Raymond might be there. Yeah, surely it's some event festival event or something, right? Yeah, she might be. Let's go. Hmm, I have a bad feeling about this. Should I really go? With Suiko around, I should be okay. Though, so let's take a look. Are you coming with us? Hmm, okay. It's about time for me to close up shop anyway. And so the three of us made our way to the plaza at the center of the village. There's tons of people gathered around here. As we got closer to the plaza, the noise and excitement increased as well. Just what is going on? I could hear certain familiar names being yelled out as we made our way through the crowd. Excuse me. We advanced steadily through the sea of... Okay, chat. I would. I okay. Let me. Let me. Let me speak. So I have not seen the word onlookers, like, ever, in my life. All right. Now I've heard the term. I I know the term, but I don't think I've ever once seen it spelt out. And I did not know it was one word. So my brain removed the N and combined the O. It moved the N and combined the O and the L, so I read that as the Sea of Donkers. And I was like, What the fuck is a donker? And I had to like really look at the word. And it's like, oh, it's it's onlookers. It's like one word. It's like, okay, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> so um oops. But it's fine. Cause it wasn't me, it was John who made that mistake. He thought incorrectly. Finally, we got to the front to see. Oh, I thought so. A familiar face stood right in the center of the commotion. But the atmosphere around her was much different than I was, I was used to. She's a ninja? Myodan Temple's doctrines are supposed to save yokai, aren't they? Yet you've come to the human village to propagate your religion. How strange. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! They don't look happy at all! Linzon looks cool! Big Sis said that to create a world where humans and yokai can coexist peacefully, we can't just help the yokai. It's important to explain our intentions to the humans too. That's why I'm here to request humans to help our cause. Speaking of which, it was Piakut and Hijini's group who kept the human village safe in the previous incident, I believe! Besides, if you want to speak like that, isn't the Moria Shrine that strange? Your main followers are yokai after all. Are you trying to turn humans into believers of your faith now? Of course, no god would turn away people who wanted to give their faith. Humans and yokai are both perfectly virtuous beings. What kind of god do you think I serve? Ah, oh, this again! Oh, then again, this probably happens even more often in the outside world. And because of you all, our followers have dwindled in number. Please stop trying to deceive them. We came against Okyo first, you know. If they change their minds so easily, isn't the problem with your god. It just means Big Sis is more open and welcoming. Oh, she's bigger, all right! It's totally become a religious war now. It wasn't just the two of them either. The two sides of their followers shouted at each other as well. I forgot who was reading. My donkers! Although some of them seem to be joining in the shouting match for the fun of it. I don't know how this is how each of it is usually like since I've never met her before. But Sny, she really becomes a different person entirely when the matter of faith is at hand. Oh my, have you forgotten who was the gracious person who helped you build your temple? <clears throat> that was Kaneko. That would be the same person who was trapped in Makai and couldn't come back, I take it. You forget who rescued you then. What an ungrateful shy maiden. Grr. Hmm. Was all this grumbling really necessary? It yeah, wasn't it Kaneko that helped, uh build the Myodan temple? Or am I remembering that incorrectly? I know like the ship is the temple and all, but I seem to recall Kaneko having a hand in that. Anyway, I just, just started stating the facts since we're making no progress. Let's settle this with a battle. As you wish. And you will do it in the way that's common sense and gets Sokyo, as expected. A Daimaku duel, Yokai extermination, battle! What? That's common sense now? Of course, my mind always picked out the strangest parts. She wasn't like this when I met her first. 
People scatter around and begin to flee once they hear the snide declared. Snide that raised her going. And a fierce wind began to surround her. A form began to materialize beside each unit as well, eventually revealing Unzan. This is bad, they're not gonna back down now. I'm gonna go call Kane. Grayson then rushed off in search of Kane. This looks fine, I'm gonna join in. You too? Nah, I'm just kidding. Maybe will kill me if she saw me get involved. Shouldn't we stop them? I'm sure you're strong enough to do so. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't be able to hold back if I have two people going after me at the same time. I'll leave one of them to you. Hey, that Oni girl was pushing me into the fray. Slide to my right, each unit to my left. Which one should I stop? Stop the quick tempered each unit. Yes. I got it. Let's get naked. Nah, let's save that for when we're trying to sell real estate. Jesus, the levels. Please calm down already. See, we got no problems on her end. But that's nine. He should have finally quieted down. That only didn't even flinch at that dumb Maku. She's as strong as I expected. She actually had to use her full power. The village probably wouldn't be standing anymore. Anyway, cool your head. You two start in such a commotion is silly. Oh. I'll be taking my leave now. Eh? Well, why all of a sudden? Sika hurriedly dispersed herself into the air. No, I love I love that Sika can leave by just snapping herself out. <laughs> just dissipates into cloud. What's going on now? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Okay, this is getting weird. It's nice point at me now, and her hand is trembling furiously. Is there something on my face? Okay, even I can't act this dumb. Even I can tell what's going on. I can feel the piercing cold glare on my back after all. There's only one person who could give off such a bloodthirsty aura. My heart was, my heart was palpitating. The cold sweat wouldn't stop dripping. I took a short breath and slowly turned around. There she is. She was behind you the whole time. <laughs> Fear her. I told you not to cause an uproar in the village. This is the wrong character. I thought it was that. I thought it was Raymu. Kane was boiling over right behind me. She was absolutely furious. You all need to be punished so you won't forget again. Prepare yourselves. Moko, you're helping out too if you want dinner tonight. Ugh, seriously? What do you mean? What? Why are you holding? Huh? Okay, okay. We just teach these troublemakers a lesson, right? What do you mean if you want dinner tonight? Yep, yep, yep. The village should become a little more peaceful then. Yes, don't let even a single one of them get away. Right, just as she said. Wait, no! Wait, I didn't do anything. I'm innocent. Oh, more battle? More battle, more battle. Alright, Daze squad. Wow, that HP is tiny. Moko can cook for herself. Alright, both of you are coming to school with me. You need a very strict lecture. Why me? I'd advise you not to resist her. It's a full moon today, you know. Ah, uh, it's a full moon, that's why. It's not an each and we're then escorted away. Good grief, events just keep coming one after another. It's starting to wear me out. Are you alright? The moon rabbit approached me with a jar of medicine. Please be still for a while. Ah, uh, uh, th 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 thanks. Whoa! Her skillful and experienced hands. Wow, that's very descriptive, John. Huh. Treated my wounds with medicine quickly. The medicine felt cool and refreshing, and the pain from my wounds was dying down quickly. Why are you injured? You didn't even do anything. Good job. Here, have a drink. Oh, T, thanks. I took a big gulp from the cup and then... The taste that should not belong in this world or any other 
caused me to spit out the liquid all over the floor. This, well, I remember this taste. It's the taste of a magic mushroom. <laughs> it's you, Marissa. Yo, long time no see. Are you so anxious for the party that you came here in advance? You're the one who got me mistaken about the time. If this reckless magician hadn't made a mistake, I wouldn't have seen her so quickly. Eh? I made a mistake? The time! You told me the wrong day! Uh, uh, <laughs> well, whatever, huh? Since you're here, let's go to the shrine and have a drink. I got fried mushrooms for you. There's really no point in trying to be serious with her. It's Marissa, after all. Just seeing her bright smile was somehow enough to calm down my anger. I guess you could call this a type of charisma, too. Marissa, my shrine doesn't exist for parties, you know. Yay, feast feasts! Before I knew it, all the missing people were in attendance. Marissa and Rainbow had now appeared, and Sika had returned as well. The little gourd dragger! <laughs> what? what kind of. What's that? that? What kind of an insult is that? She ran off and left me alone! Gourd dragger. I want to twist those horns of hers right off her head. John, what, what are you, John, are you okay? All she did was go to get help. Jesus. Of course, that's only what I thought because I was too much of a chicken to say it out loud. It's been quite a while though. How have you been? Oh, I've been fine. Oh yeah, I've added new gotchas into my collection. They've become familiars already. Oh really, that's good for you. Nice to see you're doing so well. It's weird that Yukari let a human come here so freely, though. Are you sure she didn't do anything to you while you were unaware? What do you mean? What does she do to me? What do you mean, Reimu? What does she do to people? Eve, don't say something that scary so calmly. God, just thinking about it gives me shivers. I don't want that suspicious Yukari to have done anything to me. Hey, now, don't scare the poor thing. No one knows what that Yukari's thinking anyway, so it's best not to think too much about it. Yeah, we got more important things to think about, like the feast at the shrine. The Sony seriously only has sake on her mind. Oh yeah, here's the tea leaves you asked me for before, Rainbow. It's nothing big, so just treat it as a gift. Oh, this smells great. Seems like it'll make great tea. Rainbow's face lit up into a smile as she took a sniff of the tea leaves. Sniffa! In the end, someone on the outside needs to be really good at give and take to get along against Sokyo. More like give and give! Huh, John? How have things been on your end? Has there been any incidents since the one I was here for? Rainbow's smile vanished upon hearing my words. She put her hand to her chin and seemed to be thinking about telling me something and eventually decided to do so at Suika and Marissa's encouragement. Well, it was kind of... Uh, bad. The meteorite incident was over and done with, but the cleanup after was horrendous. What? What, what happened? What happened? What happened? It was those meteorite fragments. Eden said they naturally wear themselves out, but apparently keeping them in containers lets them live longer. And there were lesser yokai who wanted to start an incident. The mischievous fairies, they tried to find those fragments again to cause another uproar. But the biggest problem by far is the, the bomb that's always behind me. A bomb? She looked at the sky in annoyance. What exactly happened here? Yeah, in other words, Mima. Ever since the incident's been solved, she's been interfering with me all day. Girls are grumbling. Leave her alone, Miba! After that, we decided to go to a tea house. Mason ended up joining us as well, thanks to Marissa dragging her along. Maybe we eventually calmed down after a few drinks of tea. The girls then began to explain all the things that had occurred in the several months that had passed. From listening to them talk, I felt even more like Kensuke was basically a secluded world. When something occurs in this sort of environment, Things tend to happen one after another. The incidents themselves were a big deal, but the management after seemed to be a lot of hard work as well. I suppose it's because this world takes in all sorts of things. It's a world where humanity and fantasy, uh, yokai, coexist. Maintaining that balance and keeping it from being shaken must be really difficult. Well, that's about it. The troubles have finally started to settle down, so it's been somewhat calm recently. That's good, you sure all worked hard. 
Oh yeah, since we're in the human village, wanna look around a little? I'll show you a lot of the great shops. That sounds good, I'll take you up on that! No objections here. As long as she has sake, so I'm sure she's fine with anything! Pew face! Let's get moving then. Jeez, you sure have a lot of energy. But what about you? Will you be coming? Rainbow asked Raisin a simple question. But Raisin didn't seem to have heard it. Instead, her eyes, her ears were swaying back and forth. Is she looking for something? What's up? Those dumplings aren't too fond of your stomach or something. I'm feeling the waves again. Waves? Yes, the waves from the meteorite after the, from the last incident. They're making her wiggle. What? They didn't tell me where to go. Shit. Oh. Are you sure? The waves are really coming from my shrine. We went searching for the source of the waves that Raisin had detected, and she ended up leading us right to the Hakuday Shrine. In the previous incident, it was Raisin's power which detected the meteorite's waves, so it was natural to believe her, except she wasn't part of the main story in any capacity. So for the safety's sake, we called off the trip around the human village and went back here to confirm the source of the waves. Chad, her jacket is huge. You notice that? Because I can see her, her tail behind her. But you look at the jacket. The jacket, like, goes down and covers, like, her skirt. It's a big-ass blazer. More accurately, it was somewhere around here, but the waves have disappeared now. I'm guessing that the output of the waves is still unsteady. So, it's... It sounds likely that someone just used a fragment. The waves were strong and just disappeared after all. That's possible. How dare they try to start something in my shrine? Are they asking to get exterminated? Oh, hold on. <clears throat> I guess this would be hiding in plain sight. So they thought we'd be fooled by the sheer obliviousness of it? You're late, Reimu. Where were you? <gasps> Mima! As we made our way inside the shrine, we found Lady Mima, who had apparently came back first. She was waiting for us in front of the shrine, it seems. Mima, what are you up to this time? Ah, oh, you think I'm the culprit? Sorry, Reimu, I got nothing to do with this. Really? Well, fine, I'll take you for your word. But what did you mean earlier, then? Mima shrugged her shoulders. She looked like she didn't care one bit about the situation. I guess she's just trying to troll Reimu a little. What do you mean, John? We do a little trolling? I guess I... I guess I might as well tell you, I took a look around just now and found a certain passage that just opened up. A passage? Uh-huh. A passage right beside the Hakode Shrine leading to you know where. Oh, uh, where's that? A passage near the shrine that leads to a certain place! Uh, I... 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 I might know where this is! Don't... Don't tell me it's... Lady Mima, you can't mean a passage to Makai- I knew it! I knew it! Bingo! Wanna see it for yourselves? Mobilizing... Wow! This is the passage to Makai? It was a tunnel that looked like a cave opening in a cliff wall. It seemed to be extremely long and deep. It was so long that it wasn't possible to see the exit from where we stood. For whatever reason, the wind blowing from within the cave made me feel bouts of giddiness. Hey, you better be careful. Makai's miasma is on a whole different level than the miasma of the forest of magic. I see. So that's why I'm getting these dizzy spells. Marissa gave me her some anti-miasma medicine and an amulet just like last time. She also had, she also asked Lady Miva to cast some protective magic on me. Just to be safe. It's so cute even there's something like this. It should be a bigger place than I thought. Looks like it was forced open. This was originally supposed to be sealed. Even if something occurred for it to open up, it should have only let two or three people through. But since it opened up this widely... So basically someone intentionally forced this open. Has anything from over there been seen around here? What if it's someone who wanted to use a fragment? Wouldn't they be more likely to be heading towards Makai? I think so too. Both ways, this warrants some investigation. Huh? That's weird. No, I knew I thought you would pass it off as Makai's problem. 
Normally I would, but whoever it is used that detestable fragment and right next to my shrine at that. I'm not gonna let whoever it is get away with this. Ah, well, I'm coming too. Ain't no reason a magician like me shouldn't. I'm going too. I want to know what this Makai place is like. And a change of scenery is never a bad thing. I don't want to go though. It's bad there. Heh, <laughs> everyone's going? I'll go as well then. Might as well catch up with some old friends. The girls seem to have decided on going to Makai. But what should I do? Hmm, it's Makai. Maybe I should be a bit more careful. I might not get a chance like this again though. Yeah, I should just go. I shouldn't let this opportunity to experience new things get away. Is it okay if I come along too? Are you serious? Makai is nowhere near as safe as Gensoki, you know. Will you be able to defend yourself? Probably not, but when the portal of hell opens up, you gotta see how far you can get, you know? Yeah, I have my gotchas, so I should be fine. The miasma doesn't seem to be a problem anymore either. Yeah, come along then. The more fighting power we have, the better. Looks like that's decided. Please protect me if anything happens, partners. Alright then, I'll hand you back to Aente. Please take care of yourselves, everyone. I think not. Mason tried to leave, but Mima quickly held her back. What's she up to? You're such a good navigator. There's no way I'll let you go so easily. Now then, Miss Detector, you'll be coming along with us to investigate these waves. Capiche? What? Bunny could not escape. What's this? Huh? How strange! I took a portal to hell! And it looks just like my bedroom! Huh! Better put on my nightmare vision goggles! Everything looks the same! Uh oh! Blazing fire. Oh, how do I. Oh, I guess it's here. Okay. Alright, go time! Encounter! No! Huh? Oh, I know you. You're a Makai soldier. Yeah, you're the Makai soldier. You're the you're the mook. Cool, cool Buster Sword you got going on back there, though. Baba Booey. Extra mooks were created. The Makai soldier. Clear. Oh, it ain't this way! It's definitely not this way! But I gotta see what's happening! Two of them. It's a pretty cool sword. Chat, they have no light in their eyes. They have no- they have no, uh... There's no whites in their eyes, so they look dead. Dead inside. Hair ornament. No, I don't want a fucking encounter! I don't want an encounter. I want the item. Wow. Wowie, wowie, wowie. It's such a pointless, pointless thing. The passage to Makai has been crossed. Hey, that was the way to go. Unlock map Makai. Yeah. Yeah, why is it in the middle of the water? Huh, so this is Makai. It's more normal than I thought. We managed to make our way through the passage safely and arrived in Makai. The scenery actually didn't look very different from Gensokyo. A desolate wasteland covered in black clouds with lightning strikes and raised grounds constantly. Those movie-like scenes were nowhere to be seen. But at the very least, it was evident that the types of species living here, the ecosystem, the geography, and the environment were clearly different. By the way, I was far too slow on foot to match the speed of the people capable of flight. Everyone else, Lady Mima, ended up creating a strange transparent ball that was capable of flight for me to ride on. Thanks, Lady Mima. This probably isn't a gift, though. I'll have to pay for it back later, probably. Then, I don't really want to think about it. But the strange mist, Miasma, was it? It sure is thick. She gave me Baba's crystal ball. That's because this is Makai. Magic is entirely normal here. It's easier to use and it has a larger effect. So it's an awesome place to change. Does this mean you're at your best when you're in Makai, Marissa? Huh. 
So not okay. Hmm, wouldn't it be better for you to live here then? Well, the place has its charms, and you can research a lot of special magic stuff here. But there's a whole lot of more troublesome things you gotta deal with in return, so I'm passing on it for now. I see. This Makai really is a special place. The world where Mystic Square was set. Just what is waiting for us here? But you should know if you played Mystic Square, John. Can you figure out where the culprit is? The culprit shouldn't be in this direction, but the waves are weak, so he or she may be quite far off. Grayson didn't even try to be defiant or difficult. She's awfully obedient. She's used to it. Since we were in a world where we didn't know east from west, we had nothing to rely on besides her judgments. Hold on, I think we have guests. Those are... Makai residents. Are they soldiers? All of a sudden, several people popped up and surrounded us. Do they... Do they think we're their enemies? Oh, the misery! Everybody want to be my enemy! You won't, you won't be taking one step further, you invaders. Rank EX? Oh, no. Rank EX. Die. Good. Stand down. Good grief. Stop already. The two parties suddenly stopped in their tracks upon hearing that voice. What? Why are you here? Yes, it's me. <laughs> Is there a reason why I shouldn't be here? She's just visiting her mom. Come on now. She deserves to do that. So you came back here? No wonder I was having so much trouble trying to find you to tell you about the party. I figured you'd complain if I didn't. Chat. Alice and Shinky are pretty much the only, uh... They're pretty much the only characters in the series that have, like, uh... Well, I guess maybe not the only ones that have a real mother, uh, mother-daughter kind of, like, feeling to them. But they're probably the strongest because they're the closest to actually having that relationship. Even though, in actuality, Shinky, like, created everything, so it's, like, you know, kind of weird. But I like it, personally. I like the idea of... I've said it before, but my favorite Shinky is the one who does not... She's not very, uh, cool. Like, she's obviously very strong, and she created Makai and all that. But she tries really hard to get along with Alice, so she tries to be hip. But she's not hip, so she just embarrasses her a lot. She's, uh, she's a dork. <laughs> she's a total dork, but she tries her best. And Alice... Alice is always embarrassed by her shenanigans, but Alice still loves her very much. So Alice will always put up with it, even though it seems like she'd rather not. I told you before, remember? I said that Makai was going to be especially busy this month, so I was returning to help out, and that I brought someone else with me. Though I kind of neglected her, to be honest. Who'd you bring? Hmm? Even the even you made it here, your way here? Hey, good to see you again. Yes, it's been quite some time, but let's save the pleasantries for later. Raven, what are you all doing here? <clears throat> Person who had appeared in front of us, the Seven Colored Doll Master, Alice Margatroyd. Yeah, Marissa and Renoske can have a, a sibling relationship. To be honest with you, I don't really see that very, like, very much. But you don't see much with Renoske in general. But he was, he is a family friend, so he knew Marissa for a lot of her life. So. That kind of, uh, that kind of relationship is definitely believable. But I feel like her relationship with him isn't too much different from Reimu's. So, like... I don't know, it just, it just is. They clearly get along with him. And even though they annoy the shit out of him, he gets along with them as well. Or they annoy, yeah, they annoy the shit out of him. But, but uh, yeah, there's not really, uh... Not a lot of dynamics. There's not a lot of, uh, classic dynamics, I suppose, in the world of Gensokyo. Uh, I'm pretty sure I read that line, so we're gonna click. She was as pretty as ever, and her voice was as calm and composed as you would like. Oh, this... Chad, I'm pretty sure this game came out before Busy Person. 
I'm, I'm choosing to believe that for John's sake. But somehow she still feels different. That's right, there's something about Alice. Ah, oh, right, I had completely forgotten that you were Shinky's daughter. Y yeah, that's it. She's exuding class and grace that I've never felt from her before. In other words, she's given off the atmosphere of an exalted dignitary of Makai. Are you all affiliated with the church pastor we had a little earlier? Or perhaps you came here to sightsee. Well, we got here, then we pretty much got surrounded by these soldiers. We came here to chase after the trespasser you're talking about. A person came to my shrine and went wild with a meteorite fragment. I'm not going to let whoever it is off so easily. A meteorite fragment? Oh boy. Wasn't Alice with us? Oh wait, maybe she wasn't. I see, I got a clear picture now. Now, now that with both Rainbow and Alice, the sides of the story available to us, we had a good idea of what was going on. To put it simply, someone had forced their way into Makai. That's why. That was why the Makai soldiers were on edge and still in some confusion. But they could not make out the figure of the trespasser, and Alice was trying to figure out where the trespasser could have gone. Do you have a way to detect our trespasser here? Yes, I'm not sure the exact distance, but the trespasser is definitely in this direction. Just as I would expect from the not so useless Moon Rabbit. Her ability to manipulate and detect wavelengths have been a huge boon for our aim so far. Whoever wrote this game is clearly a racing fan. They are they are dodging all the easy shots, and they are they are they are putting the bunny up on a pedestal. She's great. Her ability is top notch. Best character in the series. Very well, I accept your suggestion. I shall charter a high-speed vehicle for you to use. I'll be relying on navigation, Miss Racing. Oh, you really are decisive when you get to Makai. I gotta tip my hat to you. I wonder how Marissa sees Alice normally then. Alright, that helped us out a lot. However, I shall be traveling with you as well. I don't want any incidents occurring here again. Uh, uh, ha, ha, ha. From the way Alice is speaking, I guess that Reibu and Ko don't have the best reputations here. Well, I mean, Makai came first and they were like, hey, fuck off. It's not their fault. Oh, I mean, it is their fault. Anyway, because of Alice's influence, the Makai army won't be bothering us anymore. There's something we should really be grateful for. It's really quite worrying. Whoever this person is has no qualms about using the meteorite fragment and made their way into Makai. If they dare lay a finger on Lady Shinki, or if they dare hurt any of the residents or damage the capital, then I shall stop them with my own two hands. That is my duty while I'm back here in Makai. Whoa, you being really cool today, Alice. My, my, that little girl from so long ago has grown up so splendidly. It's bringing back such dear memories. Now I'm remembering that cute little girl looking like a maid who was always at my beck and call. Huh? Huh? Ah, uh, those times were so precious. But compared to that bratty child back then, I suppose a beautiful lady would make for a better attendant. She's referencing her ending, isn't she? Wasn't it uh, Mima's ending in Mystic Square? She made Alice a maid for her for a day or something like that? I don't remember the specifics because this isn't... I only remember this because this isn't the first time this specific thing has come up on stream. <laughs> so, it's uh, it's kind of memory wormed in there. Ah, uh, that Alice really was such a kiddo. Why you two? How about being my servant again for about a month maybe? Grr, stop judging up those things already. Jeez! Alice had a hard time dealing with the attacks that the two of them were launching. Just listening for the sidelines was plenty of fun. There were things like that happening? Ha ha ha! John wouldn't know because he didn't get the extra ending. But neither did I, so... Wow, I don't get anything at all. They're talking about the past, more or less. Anyway, can I just wait for our transport now? Yeah, we'll be counting on you when it comes, though. I just want to get back home as soon as possible. If I don't... Hmm. What? <laughs> Into Makai! UFO Fragment Green 3. Okay. Yo, EX difficulty? Jeez. What? <laughs> what is that expression? What? Bro, that Shanghai is on some, some shit right now. 
she's seen way too much. Oh, I got a UFO. Did I make it? I can feel power overflowing from within them. It seems your dolls are fully recovered. Yeah, but did you see that doll? Jesus! Really? That's a relief! These children look very well rested indeed. I'm happy that you took my advice. Oh, uh, it should be the one thanking you! Atlas, return my gotchas back to me. Or should I say, my familiars? She certainly wasn't the only one who was happy to see them fully recovered. It's a large weight off my mind, too. I've been really worried about what I would do if time didn't heal them. However, although they appear to be doing fine, the power I sense from them is a little different than the one I sensed when I first met them. Seriously? I think at the start they were powered by the meteorite. But as you use them more and more, they eventually became artifact spirits who could generate their own power. It might be something to keep in mind. So basically, they used up their old power source and are using a new one now. So my gotchas are no longer relying on the meteorite for power, but using their own power now. So there's no way they can go back to being normal gotchas. Or maybe so, but don't forget, this is all just my conjecture. It's been several months since these children were born, and the meteorite they relied on before is more or less gone now. They seem to be able to convert willpower and life force into energy, but I would suggest not to use them too much. Aha! At this rate, maybe I should actually try to learn magic. Maybe I could raise my MP and my gotchas could keep going longer then. I guess to be safe, I should make sure not to use the same gotchas over and over. Using the same one repeatedly might use up too much energy at once. Holy shit, they're finally explaining why you can't use the gotcha more than once per visit. I cannot believe they took this long to explain this. Wow, this baby moves like lightning. This is some awesome magic. I guess it helps that we're in Makai to enhance this magic. Hey Alice, let me this boat for a while. Would you want to bring it back to Kensokyo? Absolutely not. That was fast. Alice's private airship flew through the area like a rocket. It figures that someone who is essentially the princess of Makai would have an airship like this all to herself. You know, I never thought of it like that, but John actually raises a good point. Like, Shinky is the, the ruler of Makai, the creator of Makai, and Alice is considered her daughter, so that would mean Alice is considered the princess of Makai. It's kind of a huge deal when you think about it. But in uh in in Windows era, she's just some she's just some loner who lives in the lives in the forest of magic. It's not that she's like, you know, she doesn't like hate people, but she doesn't really like she doesn't really go out too much. But if you show up at her house and you're lost, she invites you in and she's pleasant. But humans are afraid of her dolls. They get scared and run away. She's a pleasant person, she just prefers to keep to herself, that's all. But Princess is an interesting, uh, interesting title I never thought of, but I guess it's correct. To, uh, you know, if you think about it a certain way. Seika was sitting at the bow, enjoying the scenery and drinking sake. She really can drink just about anywhere. In our rabbit shaped wavelength sensor, I mean, Raisin was taught how to operate the airship. She can drive airships now, and have become the official navigator. She's a pirate. Although according to Alice, the airship was basically an autopilot vehicle. The only thing that really needed to be changed was the direction. Of course, as soon as Lady Miva and Marissa heard this, they wanted to try to fly it. But they gave up after everyone else objected. Thankfully. This is boring. Things haven't changed once since bit, one bit since we launched. Lady Mima was right. While the traveling was painless, we still haven't found a trace of whoever it had in the fragment. Rayson, are you sure it's in this direction? I am. We're definitely closing in too. The waves are getting stronger. Is that so? We should go be catching up on soon then. But if we're heading this way... Is, some, is something wrong? I think I know what our perpetrator's motive is now. What? If you know, then spit it out. If it was something to do with Mo Lady, Shink Lady Shinky, we should be heading 
in the opposite direction towards the capital city of Pandemonium. But if we're heading in this direction, then we're probably going towards Somnus. Somnus? That god of sleep? That poppy flower? That's not what it is at all. Everyone was pretty much clueless about it. Yeah, because it's not from Toho. If it's not from Toho, I don't know what it is. We just have to listen to Alice's explanation again. Then, not again. Somnus is the place where fiendish magical beasts of Makai sleep. It was sealed off a long time ago. If our perpetrator is bringing a meteorite fragment to that place, then that person is probably trying to break the seal. The resting place of sealed magical beasts for Makai. Ooh, sounds like things are finally going to get interesting. I wonder if there's a god good Makai sake hidden there. Sounds like a real amazing place. I bet there'll be treasure inside. Foosh! Alice threw a book at, her book at Marissa with all her might right after Marissa finished her sentence. Everyone treats you like a thief because you say such shameless things like that, Marissa! If you do anything weird, I'll make sure you never return again, Sokyo. The expression on everyone's face changed. The way Alice had said that, I'm sure everyone was thinking that Marissa hit the bullseye. I see. So there's treasure inside. Hey, don't lose sight of our objective! There's something more important than treasure at hand! A certain question had popped into my head! Surprisingly, I may have been the most calm about this whole reveal. Um, may I ask something? Hmm? Go ahead. Your mother, your mother is uh, the goddess of Makai, right? Couldn't she just erase these dangerous creatures from existence? Why did you all go to such high-risk method of creating a place for it than sealing it there? Well, well, creation isn't something that can be done in a day. The Makai you see now has come about due to a long period of natural development. After Lady Shinki had laid the foundations of Makai, she let it expand and develop as it pleased. So while you could call her the creator of Makai, the shape it has formed in today is the doing of nature. I see! I more or less get it now! I don't have any experience in creating worlds, obviously, but it's sort of similar to simulation games, I guess. Chad, I don't play simulation games. Is Alice's, is Alice's explanation accurate to simulation? Is, is this correct? Is John correct? Am I correct? At the very least, it's not hard to understand what Alice is trying to convey. Everyone be careful. Something's approaching us at high speed. What? The call from the navigator brought us all back to reality. We ran straight for the bow of the airship. This is... There's dozens flying at us. And there's even self-censored? It's sake. So much sake. Whoa, so many magic books. Where'd they come from? Damn it, are they trying to tempt me? Using dozens and figurines is too unfair. There's even- ooh! What? What will I do if the rest sees me with these? What exquisite looking tea leaves. My, this is quite amazing. What's going on? Will someone please explain? John, I think you're the one who has the explaining to do to the audience. Don't be fooled, that's a bunch of Dammaku that was just fired at us. It's an attack? How do they trick me too? It's far too late for us to do anything. Grayson tried to turn the airship away from the incoming Damaku, but there were too many of them to avoid. The airship shook terribly and its speed began to fade. Alice! Hmm, the engine's been hit, it seems. Oh well, let's get off here. I'll retrieve the ship later. Everyone jumped off the ship and began to fly at their own power. Fortunately, Somnus wasn't very far away, or so Alice said. Marissa was watching the ship slowly sink into the ground in disappointment. She was definitely thinking of bringing it back to get Sokyo with her. Everyone saw those things just now as different things, huh? Hasn't this happened before? Yeah, if my senses aren't fading, then the culprit has to be... Everyone saw it differently! And Rainbow and Marissa were referring to a certain event in the past! That means it has to be... Hmm, it doesn't matter who the culprit was, I won't overlook the sin of attacking me so easily. Lady Miva certainly didn't look pleased! Several spheres of light began to emerge and surround her. The spheres then suddenly became beams that shot outwards. They flew in the direction that the Damaku came from, sweeping past the space right in front of us. 
The crowd of beams continued flying towards the distance. It eventually hit something. An explosion of light could be seen. That's... That's the... The smoke from the explosion dissipated, allowing us to finally get a good look at our enemy. It was the Palaquin ship! These two look like they could be sisters. <laughs> and there were two figures standing at the bow. Probably Minamitsu Murasa and Nue Hojo. So that means the main culprit of this incident is... It wasn't just Murasa and Nue attacking us either. As we got closer, Yokai I didn't recognize began to emerge from the ship. Just what could have happened? That would make those girls our enemies. Why do they have those Yokai with them? Well, so many of them. Looks like they're heading this way. Just what are you all doing? Explain yourselves at once. Are you acting under the Hiji that Hiji's orders? What an unpleasant lady. Ha! I'm just repaying my favor to Hiji. And besides, I want to see what changes are going to happen now. Miss Shrine Maiden, please don't interfere. Hijiri is not doing anything bad. And besides, we aren't against Sokyo, so you shouldn't get too violent in unknown territory, right? How dare you! Th these girls don't seem to know that Rainbow has no problems with wreaking havoc in other worlds! Especially Makai! So you think you, can ju you can't do anything just because we're not against Sokyo? I'm not going to sit here quietly and let you all do it at my home as you please. Thank you very much. Well, let's glare daggers straight at Nue. She looks seriously angry. If they keep trying to resist, Alice might have to seriously get rid of them. I apologize for causing such a fuss in Makai, but we have business we must attend to here. We will leave as soon as we are done. For us and the other yokai were determined as well. It didn't seem like anyone was going back down. But what about the person at the center of it all? Miyakut and Hijiri. You are probably just buying time, huh? I bet that Hijiri's a somnus now, trying to release the seals. Looks like you're right on the mark. Why is Hijini doing this? She can't be looking for powerful magic or treasures, could she? That would be terribly strange if so. She may be a magician, but she's definitely nothing like you. Well, not anymore anyway. Well, who cares? We can find that out later from the person herself. If the fragments are already at the seal, we have no time to waste here. I'm not going to give up now that we come this far. Get out of the way now or prepare to be exterminated. Well, there it is. She entered Yokai extermination mode. This new way track is pretty good. Let's see if you can back up with your words. Rasa and the other Yokai still would not budge one inch. Ugh, looks like there's no chance of negotiations here. I should prepare my familiars and get ready to protect myself. Shall we? I'm quite interested in how much they've got in them. No, that won't be necessary. I can handle them alone. Everyone, please continue on to stop the Yakut and Hijiri. What? Hey, cool your head. It's not like you can lose control of yourself just because you lost something like an airship. They have numbers on their side. Let's break through them together. It's true that I have some resentment for what they did in my airship, but don't get me wrong. I am really more than enough for all of them. I noticed that Alice's hands, which held her grimoire, began to glow a faint light. Upon closer inspection, I realized the lock on the grimoire was released as well. Oh shit, she's gonna go tall five extra stage on their asses! She's going to use the power of the Grimoire! Is she for real? Alright, we'll do that. This is your area to begin with, so the decision should be yours to make. Heh. Heh! A cocky smile began to form on Alice's lips. You're going to fight our defense force all by yourself? Confident, aren't you? My, how rude. Do you not know my forte? I'm not by myself. I have plenty of allies with me. At some point, Alice had twirled several magical strings around her fingers to control her dolls. Marissa, are you ready? A gigantic army of dolls suddenly appeared around Alice. Right then, Marissa appeared with her Hakuto lifted upwards as well. Are you serious? If you want to run, now's the time. I got no idea how powerful this will be when I fire it in Makai. Ooh, everyone scatter! Stay out of its range! Time seemed to freeze as the Hakuto absorbed all the energy around it. Just when my heart seemed like it was going to stop beating, a flash of light met my eyes in the next instant. Love sign Master Spark! Pew! Marissa fired off her spell card! 
The condensed light of several millions of stars was released all at once, forming a beam that shot straight at Somnus. This was the guiding starlight that was to lead us to our destination. Think fast, Chuckle Nuts! As the light began to disperse, everyone wordlessly flew along its path. Now, Imada! Marasa and Nui tried to encircle us again, but Alice's Doll's army came out to meet them instead. The group of Yokai and Alice's Doll army finally began to clash. From what I know, Alice's plans are never this simple. So probably activate her real one when Rainbow and the rest get far away and enough away. But still, I can't leave her alone. <laughs> I can't leave her alone, but it's past my bedtime, so I must go to bed. I'll go see if she needs help tomorrow. How you doing? You still need help? I I can't. I can't let her remain here by herself. She barely knows me after all. I'm sure she'll have no problem using her full power in front of me. Thoughts like those ran through my mind, freezing me in my tracks. Even if I wanted to, my feet would no longer move. I might be a burden to her, but before long I was the only one remaining. I summoned my familiars and ready them to fight the yokai. Some of them went off and chased after Raven and the rest. But there were still some, a considerable amount remaining. Alice and I had no other choice but to fight them. Sweat was starting to drip from my forehead, embodying my nervousness. But it doesn't matter. I have to do this. I guess I should have thought about making a will. Ah, oh, you still here? Marissa, you didn't go with the rest? I'm not the only one who stayed back. You two. Yeah, my feet just wouldn't move, you know. You... Did using so much magic power make your head go funny? Who cares? Let's get rid of them and chase after Rainbow and the rest. You don't just stand there like an you don't just stand there like an idiot. We're not gonna let Hijini monopolize all the treasure. R right! That's all the motivation I need! It's time for us to break through! Get him. Oh, it's Nue in the back. Ha! Easy clap. Easy clap. I like the new A one. Oh, another battle. Oh, shit. Ooh. Now that's monkey ball. That's monkey ball -y. I never thought I would be able to describe music as monkey ball-esque, but... You hear it? That sounds like something you'd hear in a monkey ball uh, world. 100%. It's a bop. Actually a bop. Oh, another battle! Oh, shit! And then both of them together, huh? A lot easier to kill than the ones before them. Pad gasp! I was so exhausted, I was barely conscious of what my commands I was giving to my familiars. The waves of enemy attacks came one after another, seemingly endless. These guys are sure are stubborn. Ha! That shrine made of them went ahead and stopped. That will be stopped by show. We're not going to let you all pass. This ain't Gensokyo. If you're gonna keep on getting in our way, I'm gonna use all my spell cards without holding back. Yes, not holding back may be the best option. Alice opened up her grimoire. She seemed to be aiming to sweep the whole group in front of her with one massive magic spell. Alice began her spell's incantation, and the yokai quickly reacted to try and interrupt it. Marissa and I had to support her, but there was no way we could protect her from all the enemies that were headed her way. If only I could manipulate large amounts of gacha like Alice could with her dolls. Isn't there anything that can be done? Just then, as if someone had answered my plea. Two large beams of magic flew towards the yokai group from behind us, taking out most of the enemy group. Th this is... That power! It was like a cannon of magic! That has to mean... Heh, I knew you'd be joining this party sooner or later. That's right, Alice said that she had brought another person to Makai with her. And that person was... 
Ah, it's been a long while since I felt so excited. It's time to wreak some havoc. Of course it's Yuka. She's the other PC-98 character. With the crowd of yokai mostly dispersed, we flew at full speed towards Sulmus. That chat. Whenever I read that word, all I can think about is the way the the announcer in Smat and Melee pronounces Samus's name when you like pick her. Sulmus. <laughs> he says it. He just. He says it so like scared. But the crowds of yokai mostly dispersed. The yokai were incredibly persistent. Their faith in Byakuden and desire to protect her was admirable, to say the least. We had to use a considerable amount of our power to shake them off. Everyone had used up almost all of their power. Even if we reach Somus, we're not going to be of much help to everyone else. All we can hope is that the others made it there in time. We're here. Where's the treasure? Is there any left? Don't be so rash. You'll collide into them. Ah, oh, you made it. We finally reached our goal and met up with the rest. Of course, the first thing we needed to do was assess the situation. Ah, oh, there's gonna be a rat and a cat here. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly as you see. A furious exchange of Dabmaku was taking place before my very eyes. Fiery beams were slicing through the area and heating up the atmosphere. Bullets of light were exploding everywhere, causing the area to be beset with terrible winds. Lady Mimba and Hijuni were battling against each other. And the seals, five of the seven, were broken. Fortunately, according to Alice, the remaining seals were strong enough to hold firm. Uh, what happened with those two? This certainly doesn't look like a normal greeting or a game. Mima's expression was filled with anger. That Byakuen and Hijuri incited her too much. She told Mima that even a yokai like her needed help from other yokai, and it ended up like this. She said that? Haha. <laughs> I see. She hurt Lady Mima's pride. The goodwill that she spreads doesn't work on everyone, unfortunately. Ah, oh, they stopped. If they kept on fighting, we'll be caught it up in sooner or later. Are they done? Or were those just the opening shots? It's about time we heard your explanation. Byakuden Hijini, what is your objective? Do you want Makai's magic? Or maybe a power strong enough to control against Sokyo with? No, while magic and such may be believable, not only how Byakuden Hijini thinks deep down, her intention is probably... Or perhaps you plan to release certain fiendish yokai in good faith. Everyone held their breaths waiting for Byakuden and Hijini's reply. Her answer would decide how the remaining events would unfold. Will things settle down or will the antagonism continue? That is not what I thought you were going to look like, but at the same time it is because you were in the opening. Ooh! I've never seen the sprite of her actually. Well, not, not a sprite, you know what I mean. The yokai sealed inside should not be labeled as fiendish. If she's a Buddhist, I'm a Buddhist. Alright? <laughs> Hijini began to speak. I want to save the yokai who met the same fate that I did. They were suspected of evil and eventually sealed by foolish humans. They kept their distance from humans to avoid contact with them, but they were still subjugated and sealed by humans due to their power. So you want to save them, and then they became loyal to you. Yes, when they heard that I had been sealed myself, they came to Makai with the intention of saving me, but they ended up sealed here themselves. And that's why you brought a meteorite fragment here. I plan to give them freedom of will once they are freed. The times have changed after all. Kensokyo is a place that accepts anyone and anything, isn't it? So this was Byakuden and Hijini's motive. She wanted to save Yokai and had plenty of reason and logic backing up her actions. But still, it was something we had to put a stop to. Hmm, that's not the same as what we heard. It makes us seem like the villains here. Let me ask you one question. While some of your allies may be sealed within, there are also dangerous yokai that threaten the safety of Makai sealed within. If you break the seal by force, everything within will be unrele- Will be unreleased. You mean released. What do you plan to do then? Ah, so that's the drawback. If a good deed like this brings more chaos, it can't really be called a good deed anymore. Does she have a plan in mind to counteract that? If you don't want to take responsibility for that, it's fine too. After all, I can just eliminate all of them if that happens. Now that sounds like my style. I'll join in too. Jeez, these two really like to kill! Please stop. 
I believe the yokai will come to understand if we explain things to them properly. Hmm, you make it sound simple. You sure you can do it? It may take time, but I believe a peaceful coexistence between humans and yokai, and even between all yokai, will have each will between with each other. Goodness. I shall speak to the yokai sealed within. They will not cause trouble against Sokyo or Makai by any means. I don't think that sounds right. I'm a rabbit just like the earth rabbits around here, but we can't really understand each other. And if they refuse to listen to your words, do you plan to stop them by force? I shall take that responsibility indeed. Hey, hey, wait a second here. Why y'all assuming the circumstances will be the best case? All those yokai sealed inside are really strong. How many humans do you think there are against Sokyo? If they launch an attack, there's no way we'll make it in time. You can't expect to turn against Sokyo entirely peaceful so easily. Well, I can understand what Marissa was trying to get at. Gen Sokyo may be a place where humans and yokai coexist peacefully, but that is limited to the human village. And even then, they took the time, long time of building up a mutual understanding and community, it's not something that can be achieved easily. That's why yokai come to the human village regularly, but the opposite is rare. The situation in Gen Sokyo may be peaceful, but for yokai outside Gen Sokyo, Especially supposedly fiendish yokai that have been sealed. If they were allowed to act freely, it's hard to believe they would simply behave themselves. Attacking humans is instinctive to a yokai. It is just like a human getting angry. So you think yokai should be free to attack humans because it's natural? No, I believe it is unnecessary and should be stopped. So what exactly are you trying to do? I simply wish for relations between humans and yokai to progress in a positive direction. It will take courage to test it this way, but it must still be done before it's too late. After all, how many years did it take Gensoki to become what it is? That doesn't sit well with me. I agree that it's the nature of yokai to threaten and inflict pain on others. Feel free to protect all the weak people that you want if you're planning to interfere with the way of life of this yokai. Green. Eep! Yuka's smile is way too scary! It's sending shivers down my spine! See, that terrifying smile reminded me. We may be on the same side right now, but there are a lot of scary yokai here. This, that's not something any of us should forget. You know, you're being way too caught up in yourself, Biakut and Hijiri. No one should decide what is someone's instinct. No one should decide whether something is necessary or not. All you're doing is oppressing those who don't obey your idea of a peaceful coexistence. This equality between humans and yokai you keep speaking of is nothing more than you forcing your ideals on everyone else. Raven was in complete objection to Byakuin and Hijini's ideology, but Hijini did not look disturbed even in the slightest. I guess she may have heard these words before already. There may seem to be there may seem to be a peaceful coexistence between humans and yokai right now, but there are still humans who are distrustful of yokai. That's because you think that all yokai are like you, and that's what your plan relies on as well. I cannot guarantee that my plan will work as I intended but I believe someone has to try it. And perhaps you would be wise to listen to your own words. The norm of for shrine maidens against Sokyo is to resolve incidents and is not supposed to be about yokai extermination. You partaking in such activities is merely a matter of your own individual judgment and pride. The Akin and Hijini similarly refuted Rainbow's argument. Why is she so tenacious about it? Is it like a personal mission for her? Or perhaps it's her feelings of impatience to seeing Gen Sokyo so close but not quite the paradise that she envisioned yet. Only she will know what about her reasons truly are. Hmm, then why don't you become the Hakure Shrine Maiden of the Yokai and set a new norm? With your power and faith in the accompanying Yokai army, I bet you can fulfill your goals. It seems that any further conversation will be meaningless. There was probably never a way for the two parties of such contrasting viewpoints to come to an understanding in such a short time. Oh, mama! Lady Hijuli, my apologies for our lateness. I'm so sorry we couldn't stop them. Where's the rat? Big sister, you okay? These voices. Byakut and Hiju, these yokai allies that had left behind in the battle, had finally made their way back here. Where's the rat? They looked utterly exhausted, yet they still wanted to lend Byakut and Hiju all the strength they had remaining. I felt deep respect for their unwavering faith. You all... There she is! There's the rat! Please don't worry, we're fine. 
We cannot stop here after all. We must save our old friends. It's a big rat. <laughs> the seal will take just a little longer as long as we use the remaining fragments well. Then surely. And even if it fails, Naz, we're gonna just go find more. Just take it easy, Hegedy. Hey, that's not for you to decide. We gathered under you for your and your ideals, big sis, so please use us as you wish. I'm sorry. Please accompany for a little while longer. Yes, we will gladly follow you anywhere, Lady Hegedy. The rest of the Okai followed up with their own shows of support. Their hearts were all as one in their willingness to fight for her. Bleh. We really look like the villains here. What's wrong with that? Magicians originally walked the path of heresy, after all. We're not exactly do-gooders. Hegedy, you are far too naive. I don't really care that much. I just want to go home safe and sound. A world where, a world where only humans can coexist doesn't sound bad. But I don't want it to happen using those sorts of ways. Sorry, but I'm going to have to take you out. From where I stand, what you are doing is simply unacceptable. This must be settled quickly before... I don't care what you're planning to do, but I have no intention of joining up with you. All I want to make me ha all I want to make me happy are strong opponents. That's just what I expect you to say. You're a human, right? What do you plan to do? The brawl that will occur now will be beyond your imagination. Think about it carefully. Me? I? I've come this far. I have to do this. I won't back down. I'll do my best to make sure I'm not a burden on everyone. Truthfully, I'm a bit confused since I'm not a native of Gensokyo after all. This battle decides the balance between humans and yokai and Gensokyo in the future. I'm not sure what to think about it. But at the very least, I have to protect myself now. Byakuin and Hijini's ideals are logical and reasonable, but it's too soon for everyone to accept such ideals so readily and easily. It's not the time for that yet. That's why she needs to be stopped. Suika, Ace, and Yuka, Mima, the yokai. Alice from Makai, Raymond, Marissa, and I, the humans. Everyone had their own opinions on Byakuin and Hijini's way of thinking. Some rejected her ideals. Some objected to her rationale. Some didn't know what to think. Some had clearly different values from her. Whatever their reasons, they all stood commonly. They all commonly stood against her right now. To be honest, I wanted starting to sympathize with her. Even as a human, I could understand her way of thinking. But it simply would not work in reality. At least. It wouldn't work yet. Raymer herself had been silent for a while now, and barely spoke about Hijini's ideals beyond what were they traded before. She simply stood with her gohei at the ready, with the wind rustling in her hair and sleeves. Her gaze was fixated at Byakuin and Hijini. No, what she was looking at was beyond Hijini, something far off into the distance. I suppose that's to be expected, as the Hakuna Shrine Maiden who manages getting Sokyo she does all she can to ensure Gensokyo develops naturally. She doesn't restrain anything in particular, nor does she care for any special ideals. In actuality, the degree of the incidents against Gensokyo are slowly changing. Was this a good or a bad thing for the future? No one truly knew. Because the stopping of incidents in the boundary line of the relationships between humans and yokai were all under the discretion of the Hakuna Shrine Maiden. Alright, your plan ends here right now. Then let's fight again in Makai, Hakuri Shrine Maiden, the name of the three treasures. You got it, champ. Alright, group one. Group one is down. Group two. There they are. They're here. Wow. Final. You're alive? Damn! She thick. And there she goes. Light magic. Magic Milky Way. That's the banana uh, spell card. Treasure Tool Yin Yang Demon God Orb. They matched up evenly. The fierce battle eventually resulted into a stalemate. No, I won. They then put much more distance between each other and started to ready even stronger spell cards. You know, you all really like to make such a big fuss in other people's homes, don't you? Ooh, mama. 
The voice reverberated around the entire area. It came from above, so everyone looked up at once, trying to find out who said that. <laughs> who is this sassy lost child? I guess I'll just have to deal out a little punishment. That, well, okay. Well, it's alright. It's just... <laughs> Interesting. She looks very young. Very young. Y you're a woman clad in a full body red clothes and long silver hair. Six black wings spout from her back as a magic circle began to materialize in the air in front of her. Her magic power gathered in an instant, then spears of light started to fall like rain. The Don Maka was like a tempest attacking everything and everyone in the area. Oh shit! I don't have Alice, I can't use her. <laughs> that's not intimidating. That's just, that's just not intimidating. She's a goober. That's Alice's dork mom. You are a winner. You are really something else. Every time you come into Makai, you always leave a mess behind. Can't you all let me relax for once? Oh, barging in like that isn't fair. You don't want to talk about fairness. I didn't ban people from Gensoki from entering here, you know. Oh, yes. Before I forget. The meteorite fragments. The fragments completely disintegrated after being hit by Shinki's attack. Look at that rat! That should end it. Hmm. The sense of enlightenment after the act was astounding. Shouldn't we have just destroyed that in the first place? What the heck was that entire battle for? They definitely did this all on purpose, jeez! Whatever happens, you always settle it by exchanging Damaku, huh? John's pissed. You girls against Soak, you like to fight way too much. But at least the battle has been decided now. There's no reason for Miyakun and Hijini's group to keep on fighting now. They have no more means to break the seals anymore after all. Ah, uh, you really like to make trouble, brothers, too, don't you? I was the one who dealt with that weird beast in the first place. You're so hard-headed and hasty. Why don't you just come and consult me instead of rushing into this harebrained plan? The woman who had appeared before us so suddenly was the six-winged goddess of Makai, Shinki. She settled the incident in a flash and immediately began to chide the instigator. Those two seemed to know each other somehow. Ah, oh, now Rainbow's getting dragged in two. Makai goddesses are lecturing. Only one of them. Ouch. Those people really don't know how to hold back. By the way, who's that person with the weird strand of hair sticking out of her head? With the strength that she has, I guess that she's fairly important. That's the goddess of Makai, of course. Ah, this is why I wanted this incident settled quickly. By the way, that lady's actually Alice's mother, you know. You probably wouldn't be able to tell if I didn't say so. If I wanted your input, I'd ask for it. Shinka simply took another swig as she watched the argument erupt between the two magicians. Once Shinki had appeared, even Mima and Yuka stopped fighting. All they were doing now was wiping the dust off their clothes. I guess the goddess of Makai must be really troublesome opponents even to them. Sho and the other yokai seem to be feeling down. I kind of feel bad for them. Oh yeah, what about Reimu? I silently sneaked the closer to her to listen to the conversation. Alright then, how about this? I will return all the yokai that were not originally from Makai. It'll be a pain to have Hijini come back to search for them again. You can't! That'll be so troublesome! That should be my line. Don't worry, I won't be so ir irresponsible as to release them all on Gensokyo. The only ones who will be freed will be Hijini's allies. The more violent ones will remain sealed, of course. I'll iron out the exact details of Hijini later. Of course, there'll be some ha heavy conditions involved. I understand. I apologize for my rashness. That means you have a way to free specific yokai without breaking the seal. Of course I do. It'll just take some time and effort. I am the goddess of Makai, after all. Oh! The goddess of Makai really is on a different level from everyone else. But if the two of them already knew each other from before, why didn't Miyakin and Hijini seek out Shinki for help from the beginning? Was there some reason why she couldn't? You even ended up using something as dangerous as that meteorite. We could have avoided all this if you just consulted me from the start. 
I'm sorry, but I... Uh, getting so cute is really so full of problems. Please stop getting us involved if you could. Do you have anything you wish to say, Reimu? I have no problems acting as a mediator, and you just seem to have some differences in opinions. It's fine. I just want to go back to the shrine and rest. If you can free only Hijiji's allies, and I think that's safe enough. There's no need for me to stop that. But if Hijiji can't control her own subordinates, then I'll... God, it's all so annoying! In the end, Lady Shinki decided to lend a hand to Byakut and Hijiji. They could have avoided releasing all the truly dangerous yokai that way. That would fulfill Byakut and Hijiji's objective and leave Gensokyo and Makai relatively unscathed. It was a compromise that fit both sides. I wonder if it would be able to please both sides as well as Shinki did if I was in her place. Don't worry, I will do my best to keep them well behaved. She smiled brightly as she spoke. Yeah, do whatever you want. Just don't be a bother to others. Well, that reminds me. Hikari wanted me to deliver a message to you. I think it was... A work of art takes time. Look over the canvas and think carefully about the entire picture before you wave your brush. There's no need to rush. There's plenty of time after all. Byakut and Hijini was shocked that Greymoose conveyed message at first, but her surprise soon transformed into a gentle smile. I see. Thank you. Please give me her gratitude. My gratitude to her in my place as well. Alright, I will. The two sides have finally calmed down. This was probably the best possible outcome. Just like the previous incident, it threatened to be something major, but it was resolved peacefully in the end. I guess it's a pretty common occurrence in Gensokyo, huh? It's time to begin the negotiations then. DGD, you and your friends will stay here. The rest of you may return to Gensokyo. Ah, you're staying here, Alice. You should be with your mom while you're back home. <laughs> Everyone was suddenly enveloped in spears of light as Shinky finished her sentence. They had unreadable script and images painted on them. What kind of magic is this? This is... This is forced transmission magic. And so everyone was swallowed up by the light. Dork mom. And now... The incident was over. The goddess of Makai seemed aware that we were all tired. So she teleported us all to the entrance to the Makai passageway. All of us silently and obediently returned against Sokyo via the tunnel. After we got through it, the meteorite's interference had reached its limit, and the passageway returned to its original size. I'm exhausted! As soon as we arrived back again, Sokyo, everyone headed back to their homes. Yuka returned to her flower fields. Reisen was finally able to return to Aente. She considered staying at the shrine for a while since it would be, probably be safer for her, but in the end she decided to go back. She's going to have a hard time explaining this one. Thanks for all your hard work, really. Mercer went back home quite quickly as well. She was so tired that she was in no mood for a party. Though she did mention that after she took a nap, she was going to research the mushrooms she gathered in Makai. Just when did she find the time to pick them up? Nima also seemed to just disappear. I wonder where she went off to. Hopefully she remembers to come back. Ooh, John. Ooh, you can't say that, John. It's kids. It's been. It's been 12 years. <laughs> ah. All that remained was Raymu, Sika, and myself. I'm worn out. I'm just gonna collapse here. If you want to sleep, then go back to your home already. Oh, the shrine isn't your house. If you want to sleep, go back to your home already. Z. Ah. She might as well be the only bound to the Hakuri Shrine already. Raymond gently moved that Saki Oni to a proper sleeping position. I guess she's used to it too. Even she can look innocent while she's asleep. What about you? You staying here too? Shall we try out the tea leaves that you brought? I'll prepare your share too if you like if you're staying. You're quite carefree, aren't you? We just returned and you're already back to your daily routine. If you think about things all day, I'm sure I'll become really strange. It's far better to just drink tea and relax. Well, I suppose so. I'm sure in her case there's a lot of things she has to worry about every day. She has to deal with all these people who visit her shrine as well. She probably has her hands full. 
When I think about it, if Gen Saokyo continues to exist, its development won't be decided by the Shrine Maiden or by any one person. After all, if there was someone who could, it would only be the creator of the world. Someone like Yukari Yakumo. And even then, its development isn't something that you can change overnight. It would be a long and arduous task. For all we know, she may have been watching over the entire incident from her boundaries, making sure that things didn't go too far. That's why Reimu should only focus on resolving these major incidents. She shouldn't be asked to do anything more than that. The relationship between humans and yokai, Byakuin and Hijiri's ideals, the direction Gen Sokyo will take from here on. She shouldn't have to concern herself with all this. She shouldn't have to burden herself with it. She's not the creator of this world. You there? You staying for tea or not? Oh, I'm thinking too much again! Please, I'll go home after a cup of tea. Tea time. Such wonderful tea calms the heart. Rainbow had returned to her usual leisurely and carefree self. The picture in my mind's eye isn't one I'll forget for a while. Hmm? Ah, oh, it's nothing. If you like that tea that much, I'll bring some more tea leaves back when they're all used up. Thanks. Honestly, though, you have really bad luck. Every time you come to get Sokyo- Oh, whoops. You have really bad luck. Every time you come to get Sokyo, some weird incident occurs. I'll show you around the human village next time to make up for it. Well, I managed to experience what Makai is like, at least. I may not get another chance to go there, after all. I'm quite the optimist. If you're fine in it, then who am I to complain? Anyway, we'll do that next time. Yep, I'll be back in a couple of days for the party. We can do that then. Ah, I forgot about that. My shrine will be... Maybe it was troubled expression, put a small grin on my face. Well, coming back afterwards will be fun. I'll be able to see everyone at the, get at the party later. I met a lot of people this that time. I wonder how many of them still remember me. Landing against Sokyo is an absurd thing to begin with. But coming twice and encountering a strange incident both times. Would that be called good luck or bad luck, I wonder? There were still many questions I didn't have the answer to and a similar amount of things I didn't understand. But thinking about them would be not be likely to help in any way. Things just don't always go as planned, I suppose. I guess this is what people mean when they say to take things as they come. I may not be a resident against Sokyo, but since I can't leave it alone, I'll just continue on at my own tempo. Why are you still talking, John? Though I've started to feel like I'm imitating a certain shrine maiden. Sure like your teeth too, huh? Well, I blame your influence. Mm, the party coming up will be fun! Byakin and Hiji and her friends should have returned against Sokyo by then as well. I wonder whether they'll co be coming to the party. Ah, oh, there'll be new gotchas released tomorrow too. What characters are they getting this time? I'll have to check the shot once I get back. Just thinking about such things got me feeling excited again. Rainbow, may I have another cup? Oh. Evo plus main story cleared. Evo plus BGM unlocked. Palaquinship members and gotcha and spell card packs unlocked. Palaquinship members unlocked. Received avatar old era clothes, old era clothes, old era clothes. So those are the PC98 clothes, of course. Evo plus you gotcha sport card. Give him a checkup with Alice when you get the chance. Oh god, I gotta go visit Alice! Hello. Goodbye. Where's Alice? Hmm, oh, it's you. What's the matter? I was just about to go out. Oh, I was wondering if you could check out my gotchas again. I was worried about whether the recent battles affected them. Ah, I see. The seven colored doll master began to think to herself. Since it's her, she'd normally agree to it after a bit of thought. She's looking especially conflicted this time. I guess she has some pretty urgent business. If she can, I'll just give up on it. Hmm. I do want to examine them carefully, but Lady Shinky needs me urgently, so... Oh, I see. I'll come back in the time then. I think it'd be better to get them checked out as quickly as possible, though. Would you like to come to Makai with me? It repeats five times on completely random schedule with the same dialogue until the final time. Oh, what? To Makai? 
Uh-huh. I'll go check on these children on the way there. The attendants there can bring you back to consult you afterwards as well. Well, then I'll take you up on your offer then. And so Alice and I travel to Makai together. You call me here for such a trivial thing? My, it's not trivial at all. I? I? I just think you're best suited for the job, and you could probably do it yourself, too. Ah, I'm starting to get a headache. Now, now, so I'll be having tea waiting for you after you finish up this matter. It's been a while since we had this opportunity. We've had a lot of opportunities recently. It's not the same thing. Yeesh! There's no way I can get a word in this mother-daughter conversation without feeling uncomfortable. I'll just be quiet and listen. Alice had finished inspecting my gotchas a while ago. They had no problems. Hearing that was a huge relief. I'm getting used to summoning them, but it's still a little unsettling even now. Apparently what Shinky requested was for Alice to go to the storehouse and retrieve some magic books and tools. The seems have been lacking in manpower recently, so she called here for Alice. Okay, okay, I'll go get them, but I have my own research to carry out, so I can't be staying out for long. Thank you, I. Alice looks really reluctant. Well, I can understand why. I'm sure plenty of people have their experience being called back home for something extremely minor. I can empathize with her quite a bit. Good luck. All oh, right, you're here too. Your eyes friend, right? I remember now. Your magic tools are quite interesting. Why don't you go together with her? I bet she'll be mad if I let her go off on her own. Is it okay? Uh, do whatever you want. I don't care. Not very chipper, is she? All right. There's someone there, could it be? Oh, it's you. I was wondering who it was. I've been hearing rumors of you appearing all over against Sokyo lately, Lady Mima. Shouldn't you be settling down at Hakuri Shrine at some point? Ah, oh, you're right. I do need to come up back here every so often. I'm not gonna accept everyone forgetting me again. Ah, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, though, even though I'm here, there'll be no one around. Well, I got you here at least. Want to spend some time with me? Um, spend some time! Y y y y y y you mean? I slowly unzip my gotcha pouch. Blast. Death. Oh my, it's gotten rather late. Thanks for keeping me company. I had fun today. I'm glad you had fun, Lady Mima, but if I keep spending some time with you like this, I'm going to end up dead. She shows up with no warning every four days or so at the Hakurei Shrine, and you repeat that three times. Why is everything in this game like that? <laughs> oh, that was Nazarin. I was like, who the fuck is that? All right, chat. Well, fulfill Shinky's request for magic items in the storehouse. No. So let's load data five. And this should have everything already like unlocked, I believe. Who the hell is this guy? Who are these guys? <laughs> Encounter. Encounter. And there's Mima. We're shaking, damn it. What are these encounters? There's Shinky. Contact. Present. 607 high grade T's? Synthesis. I don't know. What is the top option? Did I not, do I have to win the encounter? Oh, hold on. Let's put an encounter. Uh, who's this asshole? Why'd you come here if I'm not gonna give you my precious Ryuji Utsu to the likes of you? All oh, chat, look all the outfits. We'll go through them. We'll go through them. We got Snai Reimu and Snai Reimu and Old Reimu, PC98 Reimu. I'm going to destroy you. Easy clap. 
schoolgirl Sny. That was an easy match. You may be terribly strong. You may not be terribly strong, but I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to do that. Well, let's just do it again real quick. I, I, I didn't click anything. I literally clicked it and it immediately went into battle. Dude, everything in this game is a fucking grind for no reason. Flower bunch. Contact reform. Oh, that must be, uh... That was the wrong button. I'm... That must be, uh... What do you call it? Reform. You think we're familiar with research limit? I'm not sure. Let's see what it has about this battle. Oh, this, like, resets the, the level or something, right? Something like that, and then you can kind of respec it with more stats. I don't know. Anyway, we're not here for any of that. Who, who fucking cares about any of that nonsense? We're here because we are John. 230 wins. Oh, there's an EX rank? Hold on, I gotta try it. Hold on. Streamer's gonna try an EX battle. Easy battle. Easy battle. Easy battle. Now, what do you possibly get from EX? A lot of money. Not nearly enough money. Shop. They have everything. You can buy Shinky cards. Character catches. Okay. Yep. Got EOSD series. IN series. PCB. UFO series A. UFO series B. Interesting, interesting. Day 259, by the way. All right, let's look at the let's look at the characters, chat. So we got we got Sanai Reimu. It's pretty good. Reimu Sanai, Old Hakama Reimu, Schoolgirl Sanai. Uh, I don't know that outfit actually for Marissa. I think if I click this, that's Jessica. Uh, so. I'm pretty sure to chat the top, the top, uh, cat ears. What? Cat Reimu. The top options are King's Game 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm. They add Mima to the first gotcha machine at very low rates. Okay. I don't know who Jessica is. I don't know who that is. Sny. Sny has the school uniform, the rainbow outfit, and the idol. Interesting, interesting. Okay, okay. We got Suika. Oops. Suika, she's got... Bloomers, and that's it. Okay. Komachi. Anji. I don't know who Anji is. I don't know who Anji is, but this seems to be the only one for her. Ninja, Ninja Aya, Journalist Mode, Kunochi. I like these Tenshi ones, Kendo. Kendo and Tennis Player? Uh, wh why? <laughs> tennis Wear, interesting. Okay, Inu Sakuya. Pad Off. Dog ears and waitress. Ah, yes, yes. They turn Iku into a cop. <laughs> policia, policia, alerta, we woo, we woo. It's fine. Hina, what? <laughs> that caught me off guard. Hina's got no alternate outfits, that's so lame. Who is this? Green Dam. That's it? That's not even Mitori. I don't know who that is. There's a crab on her hat, chat! There's a crab on her hat! Who is this? This character's gotta be a reference. She's got bunnies in her hand. 
There's a no-no sign on her side, and she's got a crab on her head. Kaneko. Full armor parts. Oh, really? Kaneko seems to be missing one, though. No idea what that's about. Frog. School swimsuit. That one's not unlocked. The real form. Hey, why is that one not unlocked? I can't see that one. What's going on here? <laughs> Story. Fifth grade. What do you mean? What? Oh. I didn't even notice a difference. Okay. Meanwhile, Squishy over here is like, what are you wearing? Oh, Strike Witches. Okay. <laughs> Strike Witches and Leotard. Okay. Auditing. Gothic. Black Cat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got Black Rock Shooter over here. <laughs> wow, okay, that's... That's a reference I wasn't expecting. B R S D. You g oh, I saw. Uh... What the fuck is going on in here? We got yeah, bloomers traditional, default. Okay, okay, we got martial artist, huh? Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, all right. And Patchy, what are you wearing? Dream Club. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but uh, something tells me it's better if I don't. And I know this outfit. This outfit, uh, dude, I don't know where it originates from, but it's such a it's such a long-standing outfit, clearly. But I have no idea where the source is. But like, I still see this outfit with Romilia. It's from S. Really? It's from Silent Center in Blue. I don't remember that at all. Honestly, truly don't. Flandoru can be turned into Santa. Perfect. Eiki. Military uniform. Yeah, yeah. Yuka. Got the old era clothes. Race queen. And one in between it cannot seem to be unlocked. Hmm. Bunny. Knee socks. Oh. Nurse and a boonie. It's good. <laughs> it's not Mio. <laughs> Chinese dress. Yeah, China dress. Moko's in a skirt. And now she's in cool dude clothes. Those clothes fit her really well. Oh, and done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> K on. See, I, I I recognized it immediately. What a fucking weeb. We got Kane. Hakutaku mode. Teacher with glasses, which means you could probably get teacher without glasses. Jen. Cheerleader. Small. Small creature. There's Alice. We got Shanghai outfit and old era clothes. Those are nice. Oh look, look at a uh, look at Shanghai. Shanghai outfit swaps with her. So uh, Shanghai's wearing Alice's clothes and Alice is wearing Shanghai's clothes. That's a nice touch. It's hard to see because it's, uh, it's really small in general. But they actually do an outfit swap. Ugh. I like that. Why is Yomu naked? Okay, she's not naked. <laughs> she, she looked naked. So you have her school swimsuit unlocked. But you don't have Suakos? Hmm. Hmm. Why is Brown only wearing an apron? Pajamas. Right, 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 right. That's not. Yep. Brown. Nude apron. <laughs> you can see her ears. Dressed up. China dress. Default. Eh. Detective Rat. Detective Magician. <laughs> Hogasa doesn't have any? Damn, alright. <laughs> it's just Unzan. 
and actually making her more of a nun. Sailor suit, yep. Yeah. Swimwear. It's familiar swimwear. <laughs> oh, he can put her in a suit! Look at that! That's clean! And swimwear. Oh. I mean, that's great. But put on the suit. Show tiger bikini. Oh my Jesus! Good lord! No way, what are you wearing? Magical girl. No, get that off. Two Mimas? Spirit mode. Took her legs. And then Mion. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's that's Higurashi. That's Higurashi, I know that one. Hmm. And Shinky. A wedding dress. You can put her in a wedding dress? Cursed doll. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I, I, wait, can you see the full art of this thing? I don't know if you can. Look at that, look at that creature. Sinsec, look at this lad. Makai soldier, yeah, 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 yeah. Monster flower, Kadama. Willow the wisp, what's Aya doing back here? Aiki. Amazing. Zako. Cannot. I cannot see anything but for Zako. Hmm. Well, there you go, chat. That's it. That's the game. That is Tall Pocket Wars Evo Plus. Now, I'm ending the game, but that's just because I don't know how to go back to the title screen without doing so, because I want to see the title screen. But we did it! We did it! It's over! It's done! The game is finished! The BGM is open! Evo! Evo Plus! Oh, so these were... So some characters didn't have themes, I guess. I guess some characters didn't have themes in the original and they got added in the extra. It's kind of weird. Anyway, chat, the music in this game is actually really good. So, you know, despite everything else about the game, at least that's high, high. Give me that monkey ball music again, please. Yeah. Yeah! Ready? Go! <laughs> no, I want the, uh, I'd like the OST for this game, for sure. Well, chat, did you have fun? Did you enjoy John's trip through Gensokyo? Meeting all of his favorite Toho characters? Experience his, his real own Toho incident? I had a great time. My throat, not as much. But... I got back. I got back to it. I, I beat the game. I totally didn't do it legit, but who cares? Because you saw what the game was. And can you blame me? So much grinding. Not a bad idea for a game. It really isn't. But every single aspect of it was turned into a grind fest and I just don't have that kind of time to do that nor is the game engaging enough to warrant the grinding that's another big thing about it it's way too grindy and it does not feel fun to grind in any way shape or form so yeah not a very great game in a lot of places but it did have a lot of characters it did it had a pretty it had a pretty good art it had great music Ooh, a lot of aspects to it that were pretty strong and since it came out it came out quite a while like quite back then But you know some of the earlier games in that time frame were just ridiculous in how good they were anyway like Tolvania I'm telling you man Frontier Aja Where they were they were they came from the future or something their quality 
their quality was like the world just wasn't ready for that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Granted, if they you know the, the the cost to make a game like that in current era would be way too ridiculous, but they really put out an incredibly good game in like 2010. It was like, ugh, damn man, it's crazy. But yeah, chat. I had fun, but it's over and done. Biakridin has not won. Bars. Hope you enjoyed. There is a sequel to this game, but it's not translated in the story, so I will not be playing it until it is. It probably will never be, but I'm just putting it out there that they did make a sequel. It has a ton more characters, but the translators decided that it wasn't worth translating the story, so they only translated the gameplay aspects to it. So, you know, the fun part of it for me is not readable what a shame but it's okay because i'm sure chad isn't complaining <laughs>